Hi, my name is Jade Devriant, and my science fair project falls under the chemistry category and is named the effect of time and temperature on glow sticks' light intensity. Um, a brief synopsis about what brought me to this research is thinking about glow, um, glowing objects in our society, um, glow sticks. They're found, um, they are omnipresent, found from graduation parties to high school football games and elsewhere. But it's not uncommon to hear people complain about their quality and how short the glow sticks last and the difference between real world performance and packaged advertising that claims that they last up for up to 24 hours and so bright. So this experiment is designed for consumers to better understand the advertisements on glow sticks packages by comparing the intensity of glow stick fluorescence over time as well as in different temperatures. <clears throat> The research questions that, were, uh, the, that I was trying to answer were that when glow stick packages advertise their products as lasting for hours, how well do they keep their brightness over time? And how does one define brightness? Um, and also, how could the brightness of the glow stick be impacted by uncontrollable factors in the environment, such as temperature? Will the glow stick, do glow sticks glow brighter in the winter or in the summer in hot, temp in hot or cold temperatures? <clears throat> the hypotheses were that uh, if the glow stick is activated, then the light intensity of the glow stick will decrease over time. Um, the other layer is then the temperature factor. So if the surrounding temperature of the glow stick is decreased, if it's in the colder temperature, then its light intensity will decrease faster. It will get dimmer faster. And then on the other hand, if the surrounding temperature of the activated glow stick is increase, then its light intensity should decrease slower than the glow stick, um, than the glow stick's trials in room temperature or outside in the cold. <clears throat> My variables that I was measuring here was the independent um, the independent variables as the surrounding temperature as well as time, and which were what I was manipulating, not measuring, I'm sorry, and the dependent variable, what, which is what I was measuring, was the photoresistors light resistance, um, the tool I'll be using to measure the brightness. The controls were the photoresistor and multimeter device measuring resistance, the brand of glow sticks, uh, package from which glow sticks came from, and the person, me, cracking the glow sticks. Um, some background information, if one is not familiar with, is that a photoresistor, which is also known as a light dependent resistor, is a light sen a sensitive electronic component that measures the intensity of light. And the unit that comes out of it, um, not the unit, I'm sorry, but the photoresistor's uh, resistance um, gets higher when the light intensity decreases. So the lower, the, and then in the dark, that the photoresistor's resistance is very high. So it's an inverse relationship, as in the darker it is, the higher the resistance, and vice versa. <clears throat> as well, a multimeter can measure the resistance for particular components in the electric circuit and one could also choose the unit of resistance that the multimeter is going to measure. Um, since it was very dark, I used a 2 million um, measure multimeter unit. 2 million ohms. <laughs> uh, the procedure. So, to be able to measure the brightness of the glow sticks, they had to be measured in a, they had to be in a space that was completely pitch dark to not be effect, affected by daylight or lamps or anything as this... Uh, um, like that. So I created, I used a glass jar and wrapped it in aluminum foil as well as taped it with the lid with electric tape which made a snug um, pitch black container inside where I could put the glow stick in. <clears throat> I drilled a quarter inch hole in the center of the lid which then I could place, that allowed me to place the photoresistor side face down through the drilled hole. Um, and then the little wire that sticks out of the photoresistor goes through that hole in the lid. I'm sorry, I, don't, I, I did not take pictures. And um, so these little wires will come out of the lid and they will be attached to the probes. They will be connected to the multimeter probes with the photoresistor wire. Um, and this will allow me to, this allowed me to look at the measurement from the multimeter. <clears throat> and so I, first, I started off with determining the resistance baseline by just measuring the, without any glow sticks inside the jar, what the darkness was. And then I measured the resistance after that for five glow sticks, three times in room temperature to determine 
the effect of <clears throat> time over the light intensity of the glow stick. And then once outside in 50 degrees Fahrenheit, the first time room temperature was 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and the third time, the fifth time was in the oven, once which was around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Each um, time, a glow each glow stick trial was inside the jar for 15 minutes, and the resistance was measured every minute. So this allowed for a lot of measurements that were then averaged out, which and graphed in that. Um, risk and safety. I wore gloves and goggles while handling the glass worm and drilling into the jar to avoid to be safe and also use mittens when manipulating the jar in and out of the oven. The results were that um, the mean resistance of the photoresistor calculated um, gave that the, uh, the photoresistor in temperature of 65 Fahrenheit degrees showed a positive relationship with time. As the temp as time went by, the light intensity decreased. Then also the resistance of the photoresistor and the temperature in 80 degrees in 80 Fahrenheit degrees showed a positive relationship with time, but a relatively smoother slope. And the resistance which uh, and the resistance of the photoresistor and the temp in 50 Fahrenheit degrees showed a positive relationship with time, but a relatively steeper slope. This is the graph that shows it, so one can see. So as resistance goes up, the bright this means that the brightness goes down. So the colder temperature went got much dimmer in 15 minutes compared to and then the hot <clears throat> the hotter trial was it stayed brighter longer. The light intensity stayed stronger with a little lower resistance. Um, so this became this answered. My interpretation was that the glow stick light intensity would decrease over time and do so faster in the colder temperature. So warm temperature keeps the glow sticks brighter longer. And also this showed that while the brightness emitting from glow sticks may technically last hours, allowing the brands to label their packaging as such, the intensity at which they glow drastically drastically decreases from the moment the stick is activated. Um, a lack of control was happened when placing the jar in the oven because it could not be controlled. I tried to, I turn it on and then was letting it cool off, but I, there's no 80 degree setting. And um, so it probably varied and decreased over time a little bit. Using an equipment such as an incubator would allow to keep the temp a hot temperature at a constant, constant rate. Um, and also I would change this to be more accurate by doing multiple temperatures such as 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, etc. degrees Fahrenheit to really find out the relationship more precisely. Um, so in conclusion, I the experiment confirmed all my hypotheses as results confirmed glow sticks do last, but their intensity decreases significantly over time and that they last longer and brighter in warmer temperatures. Therefore, it was discovered while the brightness emitting from glow sticks may technically last hours, allowing the brands to label the packaging as such, it it's very dim while and these are my references. Thank you for your consideration.